just gotta begin to chase a dream that is bigger than you. to present sort of a, a high level nutrition topic today just you know it's just straightforward everyday nutrition i everyday nutrition i think it's really important you know, a lot of us want to be um eating healthy but i feel like there's there's just a lot of stress and stress and confusion about how to eat healthy and and i want people to know how to make smart choices but also enjoy their food um, eating should be an enjoyed experience. Um, so we're kind of going to go, I'll show you where we're headed today. Um, I, I want to talk about what does a healthy lifestyle look like? What does it mean um, to live a healthy lifestyle? And then I'm going to go over some different food strategies that you might be able to, that you can consider. And so you might find that some of these ring, um, ring true more for um more for some of you than some other ones so we'll talk about food choices we're going to talk about portions we're going to talk about mindfulness and then at the end i like you to just kind of quietly take your own moment to um assess your needs and maybe set some goals so that is where we're headed um i'm going to go ahead and mute um i'm just hearing a little bit of background noise so I'm just gonna... There we go. I think that's better. Awesome. Okay. So when it comes to healthy lifestyle, um, I really like to emphasize the point that there really is no, no finish line. You know, I get a lot of questions about different diets and different ways of eating and things that people are doing um, that they want to do temporarily that I always encourage people to think about um, you know, is there, are the choices that you're making choices that you can make for the rest of your life, healthy lifestyle, we, we don't want to do it temporarily and then finish, you know, it's like if somebody says to me they want to go on a diet that that um, implies that at some point they want to go off that diet. And what we're really looking for here is just healthy, balanced lifestyle. Um, eating doesn't have to be, when we eat nutritiously and healthily, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so we're just practicing taking some small steps to make some improvements um, if you feel like there are some improvements to be made. So really, there's no finish line. Um, a variety in food choices is really important. So we also, we want to consider all the different wonderful nutrients that we can get from our foods and get variety in our diet so that we can get all the all the health benefits associated. <clears throat> and I want food choices to be um, appealing and delicious. So many, so often I hear from people, you know, I'm trying to eat healthy, but I'm so bored with, you know, just having chicken and rice and vegetables. And my response then is was like, well, then why is that all you're eating? There's so many options out there. So healthy eating can be really appealing and delicious and, and interesting. And while I'm not going to focus on the next couple of things, the next couple of points in depth, I just cannot have a healthy lifestyle presentation without mentioning that, of course, the healthy lifestyle involves staying active um, and managing stress. Um, there's a food component to this as well, but we know that um, the, the more stress we carry, the more um, cortisol our body produces, which actually produces um, or stimulates, promotes weight gain, especially around our middle. So managing stress can help us make healthier lifestyle or healthier food choices, but also um, help keep our bodies healthier in general. So managing stress is something that I know is easier said than done, but I, I just like to point it out as a very important part of a healthy lifestyle. And I always talk about stress management with my clients um, because it always ties into, ties into food. Um, getting adequate sleep is really important too for our body to rest and then be able to um, recognize and effectively use our hormones that are um, our hunger hormones, our fullness hormones. Those um, are all impacted by sleep. So when I have clients who are not getting enough sleep, um, it's certainly impacting their, um, their diet and their food cravings and that sort of thing. So really important. And then I think um, it I also try to encourage all of these things in small steps. I never anticipate that after after a lecture or a nutrition session with me that somebody's walking away and, and changing all the things. You know, you just kind of identify some heavy hitters for you would be good places to start. Um, you know, and I do hear a lot of um, 
I don't want to say excuses, but there's a lot of reasons why eating healthy is difficult. Um, we're, we're really busy or a lot of people have that, um, you know, all or nothing. Like I, I can't go all in, so I might as well not do it at all. And I would, I, to that, I would say, you know, don't put off healthy eating, do what you can um, and kind of build momentum from there. So what should our plate look like when we are um, aiming to eat healthy? I love this little graphic, and I use this for my clients who want to lose weight, for my clients who just want to eat healthier, want to control their cholesterol, their blood sugar, all of the, all of the above. This, this teaching tool is a really nice way to think about how to set up your plate and your meals. So about half of your plate um, <clears throat> should be made up of uh, vegetables and or fruits or vegetables. So, you know, think about it, even if your food doesn't fit perfectly on a plate, you know, at breakfast, if you're having a bowl of, you know, whole grain cereal, it might not, it's not going to fit on a plate perfectly, but do we have some grains? Do we have some, some fruits or vegetables, probably fruits on a bowl of cereal? And then do we have some protein or some dairy in there? So this is kind of, that's kind of the approach we want to take half that plate with very low in calorie, high in nutrition, fruits and vegetables, about a quarter of that plate or that meal. We want some sort of protein source, preferably a lean protein. So whether that comes from plant sources or animal sources, um, the leaner, less saturated fat options, the better in terms of heart health. And then about a quarter of that plate would be some sort of grains. And we prefer most of the time to be whole grains as, a, as opposed to refined grains. So sticking with um, you know, whole wheat and whole oat products and quinoa and barley and brown rice and wild rice and those sorts of things, whole grain pastas, all good option for a lean, um, for a whole grain. And then we've got our dairy off to the side and that might be, um, that might be cow's milk dairy. It might be a dairy alternative if you, um, don't do cow's milk, but at least we're considering getting some calcium. So when we see that dairy off to the side, that should be what we should think of, uh, getting that calcium in our diet too. Um, and then when we balance our plate this way, we're getting a really nice mix of our macronutrients. So our macronutrients are proteins and carbohydrates and fats. Most of the foods we eat cover a couple of those different categories, but by setting your plate up this way, you're getting a really nice mix and balance of those carbohydrates and, and um, proteins and then healthy fats. So uh, portion size is another thing to consider. I think um, you can eat all the healthy, only the healthiest foods in the world, but you can still overdo it if you're, if you're not being mindful of portion size. And there's a lot of really interesting research out there that shows that um, we tend to eat more when we eat from large packages, from larger plates, when we use larger serving utensils, we tend to eat more food. Um, so when our servings are larger, we're going to eat more. Um, we eat more when food and treats are visible and easily accessible. So there's very interesting studies where they put candy bowls in different parts of the office. You know, one's right on somebody's desk, one's um, in the desk where you can reach it, but you can't see it. And one's in the break room where you have to get up and you can't see it, but you know it's there. And the average person ate nine pieces of candy when the bowl was right in front of them on their desk and six pieces when it was in the drawer, not visible, but still reachable and three pieces when it was in the other room. So I think that's a good reminder, you know, keeping the healthy foods, you know, the fruit bowl, something like that sitting out where you're more likely to grab it. And then some of the less healthy options, not, not as um, in your face, not as easily accessible. And we also don't pay attention to what we've already eaten, research shows. So if we're, you know, when we're eating, if they were at a restaurant and, and um, chicken wings and bottles of beer are left on the table, people tend to eat less than when a waitress is clearing them or a wait staff is clearing them away. Um, because when you can see what you've already had, you're less likely to eat more. So um, lots of interesting research there, there and, and a good trigger for you then to pay attention to, you know, what are the size of my plates? Am I filling my plate? Should I use a smaller one? And knowing also that when we eat out, um, we're probably getting a lot more food than we need, depending on the restaurant. But research shows that servings have grown over 200%. It's either 230, 220 or 230, but it's definitely over 200%. So our serving sizes from restaurants have more than doubled in the last 20 to 30 years. So that's pretty eye-opening because our um, our needs haven't doubled. We've just um, 
just gotten used to bigger sizes. Although I will say since COVID and everything's gotten more expensive, I have seen some portion sizes come down a little bit, but just something to be mindful of. And speaking of mindfulness, so the hunger scale is a really great tool for people to use um, and a great way to control your portions um, to kind of understand and practice using your, your body's own cues for when am I actually hungry and, and when am I starting to get full and kind of thinking of the scale as a way to indicate when you should start and when you should stop eating. And I think this is, can be really helpful for people who especially tend to be um, maybe emotional eaters or stress eaters or, you know, eating out of boredom, eating for reasons other than hunger. This is a great strategy to employ. So if you look at the scale and you think um, on a scale from zero to 10, zero being I'm, I'm way too hungry, I'm nauseous, irritable, um, I have a headache, it's been too long since I've eaten. And then 10 being like painfully full, I'm nauseous because I ate way too much. So five is perfectly neutral. I'm not hungry um, and I'm not full. I'm just perfectly satisfied. And we try to want, we kind of want to try to stay in that like three to seven range where, you know, when you're starting to feel that stomach, um, feel a little empty, your, th your thoughts kind of start going to food. That's the time to eat rather than waiting until you're really, really hungry. And then eating slow enough to recognize um, that when, when you're feeling, you know, comfortably satisfied, but not uncomfortably full, you know, so around that seven range and paying attention to that um, can be a really good tool to help um, if, if emotional eating or reactionary eating is something um, that you know that you do. I wanted to make one quick point here um, for anybody who is interested or curious about weight loss. Um, <clears throat> the recommendation for healthy weight loss is one to two pounds per week. Um, that is a good um, steady state maintainable way to lose weight. A lot of times um, on certain diets or more restrictive diets, you can drop weight really fast, which I agree is very motivating for people. A lot of times it's water weight. It's not true body weight, and it's very difficult to maintain that sort of weight loss. Um, a lot of diets that encourage um, a quick weight loss um, stop working once you go off of that diet. So um, I just like to point out here that the recommendation is one to two pounds a week with a goal of 10% weight loss to start. So in that first six months of weight loss, a 10% weight loss goal is a fabulous goal. So for somebody who weighs 250 pounds, that means 25 pounds, um, which I get feedback sometimes. People's like, well, I have a lot, I want to lose a lot more than that, but um, let's just start with this goal and see if we can get there and then maintain that. And we also know that changes in health markers occur after only 5% weight loss. So for that same person, you know, a 12 pound weight loss, we might start to see changes in blood sugar and blood pressure and cholesterol. So, um, it doesn't take a lot of weight loss to make health improvements. And I think that's a really important point to remember. Um, research shows that of all the different ways to go about losing weight and different percentages of macronutrients, low carb, low fat, you know, high, high fat, whatever it might be, um, the true key to actually encouraging weight loss is to take in less calories than your body burns, regardless of what that macronutrient percentage is. So um, just creating a little bit of an energy deficit by moving more and finding some ways to cut some calories from your day. So it might be um, taking down some portion sizes. It might be eliminating um, or reducing treats that you have throughout the day, whatever it might be, finding places to just tweak out those, cut out some of those calories is a good way to go. And I also think it's really important. One of the most important things I think is to really focus on, you know, we don't want the connotation of healthy eating to feel like a negative thing or feel like you can't have certain foods. I really prefer to focus on the foods that you should be having to encourage a healthy lifestyle, to keep your body healthy, your immune function up. Um, so a plant-based diet or plants, not meaning that you need to be vegetarian, but just a plant forward diet where you're including a lot of plant-based foods um, has really been shown to be the way to go. So lots of fr fruits and vegetables. Um, I mentioned here leafy greens and dark berries. They're two of the, um, I would say two of my um, most encouraged foods because there's so much good nutrition in them. Um, the color that you get from leafy greens and, and 
and the dark berries and even foods that are red and orange, there's lots of antioxidants in there, which help keep our cells healthy. That's really what an antioxidant does. It stops this oxidative process that can happen in our body when cellular damage is occurring. So foods that are high in antioxidants can help stop or prevent that process. Leafy greens are a great source, dark berries, um, nuts and seeds, more of these plant-based foods that you see on the next line as well, whole grain foods. Um, getting healthy fats. So healthy fats would be fats that are based on, um, come from plant-based sources with the exception of fish because um, fish we know is high, that some of the fish are high in omega-3s. So really high in um, healthy fatty acids that we want to be including. Our body cannot make omega-3s, so we need to get it from, from our nutrition. So fatty fish like salmon and tuna, herring, river trout, sardines, anchovies, those are all really great omega-3 sources. Um, other sources of fats, plant-based sources, olive oil, canola oil, peanut oil, avocados, nuts and seeds, all really good ways to get in the fats that our body needs. We need fat, we just want to get more from the plant-based sources and less from um, animal products that have the saturated fats that are really hard on, on the heart. Um, that kind of goes along with that lean protein I talked about, eliminating the fat, you know, getting the skin, getting rid of the skin on your poultry can get rid of a lot of the fat, picking leaner cuts of meat, um, you know, doing more uh, plant-based protein like tofu, um, eggs are a great source of protein, beans are a great source of protein. And then you get some from your whole grains and there's some vegetables that, that offer some protein as well. When we, um, when we do have dairy or dairy substitutes, we wanna go with the low fat options here because we're cutting out that saturated fat that's hard on the heart. Um, in general, not a huge fan of reduced fat products if it's your standard, you know, if it's like chips and cookies and stuff like that. Cause usually when they take away fat, they add sugar, they add salt to make up for it. When it comes to dairy, however, they've just taken out some of that saturated fat. Um, and made it a leaner product. They're not adding in other stuff to make up for it, if that makes sense. And then focusing on, um, I mean, making sure you're getting good fluid intake. A lot of times we do mistake um, thirst for hunger. We might think we're hungry when in fact, um, you know, if we were sipping on water all day, we might not might not experience those same, same feelings. So hydration is pretty important too, to help keep your energy level up as well. These are a couple samples of healthy, um, Healthy diet, and when I and and in the I want to clarify that when I say diet here, I mean diet as an eating plan. So the Mediterranean, Mediterranean diet, the Dash diet stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. It is um, a diet designed to encourage lower blood pressure. But both of these options have very very similar recommendations, and these are voted every year in New U.S. News um, World Health Report. Um, there's doctors and dietitians and epidemiologists and researchers that kind of look at all the eating plans and say, which are the best ones for good health? And these tend to win out year after year because they're very much focused on fruits and vegetables, whole grains, nuts and seeds, very plant forward, again, limiting, as you, you can see, as you get to the top of that pyramid, limiting some of the, you know, the red meats, the desserts, the sweets. Um, on the DASH diet, you can see limiting fatty meats, the full fat dairies, sugar sweetened beverages, limiting your salt, um, and focusing more on some of those plant-based foods and leaner cuts of, um, you know, fish and, and poultry as well. So going for color, I mentioned, I mentioned the whole grains. This is a snapshot from the MIND diet, and I think this one is so interesting. It's um, MIND diet, it's a diet approach to... Um, focusing on cognition and reducing cognitive decline as we age. So think of it as like an anti-dementia or trying to prevent um, Alzheimer's disease. There's a doctor from the Rus Rush Institute on Healthy Aging here in Chicago. Um, she has since um, passed, I believe, but she did a whole bunch of very interesting research and published this MIND diet. And it showed that people who followed this diet the least had the fastest rate of cognitive decline. People who had the highest scores in terms of following this particular information that you see on your slide right now had the slowest rate of decline and in fact had a 53% reduction in the risk of developing Alzheimer's. And um, so this is some newer research and I think it's really uh, fascinating. And 
um, again, it's emphasizing um, green leafy vegetables, other vegetables as well, nuts, berries, beans, whole grains, fish, poultry, olive oil. This one even has a glass of wine on there per day, but limiting those same foods that we know are higher in salt and sugar and fats. So we're showing in a lot of different ways that, that those diets that are, are good for the brain are also good for the heart, are also good for blood sugar and all of that. Um, so I think, you know, going forward and taking all of this information into account, um, think about all your favorite foods and how you might just be able to swap some out and make them a tad healthier, you know, um, maybe it's part, maybe it's just portion size, maybe it's not even what you're eating, but cutting back on the protein and the, and the pasta part or the rice part or whatever that might be and then adding more vegetables to it that's I say that because that's a very common one for my clients even when they're eating the right things the balance is a little bit off there's not a lot of fruits and vegetables so increasing those um, just smaller portion sizes of the other stuff doing more food preparation at home makes a huge huge difference and I know that um, you know it takes a lot of planning to be able to eat healthy and you um, I do recommend taking some time each week to kind of plan out what are some, what are a couple recipes or a couple not even cooking recipes but just things that I can assemble at home that I know are going to be there when I come home from work and I'm less likely to get you know grab a takeout or something so that planning ahead is really really important trying new foods and new recipes there's a lot of great um if you have an air fryer there's a lot of great stuff you can do that way I love to google like um slow cooker meals, because especially if you're working from home once in a while, you can throw something in in the morning. It's ready when it's time for dinner. I love sheet pan meals where you just put the protein and the vegetables right on the pan, bake it all together, line that pan with foil. There's hardly even any dishes. So um, maybe uh, increasing your recipe repertoire a little bit could be could be helpful. Um, by that food swaps point on the top, you know, maybe um, maybe it's just swapping out for leaner cuts of meat or substituting meat once in a while and doing something bean based, putting in beans instead of instead of the meat. Um, you know, think about ways and, and some of your favorite meals. What might be some ways to tweak them and make them a little bit even um, healthier? I think it's important to involve other people in your house, too. You know, I. Um, when we we typically do Sunday night dinners together because nobody has to run off and do things on Sunday nights. And I say, what do you guys want to eat for the week? And we usually end up with some form of tacos, which is fine, can be totally healthy, you know, loaded up with vegetables, get some whole grain, um, some corn tortillas and um, a lean protein, you know, and then we change out our protein all the time. So it's kind of like we're eating the same thing a lot, but, but mixing it up. So think about ways that you can do that. Um, think about what you're drinking all day long. I mentioned staying hydrated, but also calories can really add up when it comes to your beverages. So think about what you're, um, what you're drinking, um, you know, cutting back on the sugar related stuff, sodas and lemonades and stuff like that. I always say artificial sweeteners in moderation. I think they're fine a little bit, but they are actually very, very, they're many times more sweet than sugar on the actual sweetness scale. So um, because the more sugar we have, the more sugar we tend to want to have. So artificial sweeteners can really kind of um, increase that sugar craving. So just be mindful of that. Keep them in moderation. Um, knowing that alcohol calories can add up to um, so just being mindful of, of what you're, what you're drinking too. Um, think big picture, you know, and in the course of a day, how am I doing with getting fruits and vegetables with getting in some of these healthy foods that I need? Um, stay positive about it. You know, think about when it's time for a snack, think about something that sounds good. That's healthy. Um, make sure you're getting in your fruit. And then when you eat that, um, there's just less room for the other, for the other stuff. Avoiding that all or nothing thinking if you, you know, have a meal that maybe wasn't the best choice, that's okay. That's okay once in a while. You know, think about your everyday foods versus what are your occasional foods. Most of the time, we want to try to eat this way. And then once in a while, we want to go out for pizza or burrito joint, grab some Dairy Queen, fine. Maybe you, um, you know, get a smaller size than normal, something like that. And enjoy, I think it's really important to enjoy the treats, the foods that you like, but maybe don't keep it around the house. If it's going to tempt you, just go get a little bit of it when you need it. And all of these things, I think um, they definitely take some practice. Um, moving more, I'm not going to spend much time on this slide, but if you're somebody who sits most of the day for work, you know, finding 
um, ways to get up and move more. Once you have the gym available, of course, you'll have lots of great options there. But we know that exercise is a great way to manage stress, as I mentioned, help you sleep, improve your mood. Um, I just always like to mention that if you're sitting here kind of thinking about what does my diet look like? How am I doing? I think a food log is a really fabulous tool. Keep a food log for a few days and include one weekend day because they can be a lot different than your weekdays. And it's just really great for awareness and then accountability too. Um, thinking about what your goals are, you know, if you have a long-term goal to you know, lose 10 pounds or improve your cholesterol. Think about short term then. What does that mean for me today and this week and next week? What are some small changes that, that I can make now that that get me to that bigger goal? Um, I think, yes, I've got my contact information on here. Um, I'm sure you will have ways to, to reach out to Janine as well. Um, happy to answer any, address any nutrition questions. Um, we're happy to answer any questions about the fitness center as well. I appreciate your. Um, I have a question. Do we have the corporate rate yet? I'm sorry, uh, the corporate rate for the yes. fitness center? Yes. Um, so there is a membership rate, uh, that will be set to $35 a month. Um, there's, uh, Corporate memberships are an option, and that's something that uh, we are in discussion with um, for some different companies. So I'm not sure if uh, your company is one of them, but uh, that is something um, that's available as well. So we'll be working through those details and options. Okay, and when is the opening? So um, we're very hopeful for a May 1st, early May opening. Um, you know, the space is still under construction, uh, though things are moving along very quickly. Um, so that's, you know, that's the plan. Construction, of course, can be tricky and it might get skirted, but, um, you know, we have lots of communication uh, lines open uh, with, you know, the tenants in the building. So as soon as we like know the definitive date for sure, we're gonna be communicating that with everybody and getting more information out there. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Any, any questions for Kate before we get um, into the uh, fit two questions? I just wanna make sure that we um, utilize her while she's here on with us. Nutrition questions. I would have a question uh, for Kate. I think the uh, the scale that you had for uh, emptiness to fullness when you're eating is something yeah. of interest to me. I, I read something in a magazine about trying to target 80% full. So as you're eating, you know, you try to stop when you feel about 80% full because your your brain takes some time to catch up to uh, your body in the sense that you should be full at that point. Absolutely. I was wondering if, if you think that that's a, a valid thing and if there's an associated say, time frame associated with it in the yeah. past, you know, you start eating a bunch of food very quickly, but after about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, then you feel full. So if you can slow down and eat slower for a certain period of time, if that would help with that 80% full target. Yeah, I yeah, that's a great point. And absolutely, I think it does. I think that 20 to 20 to 30 minutes is usually what I say to cut, you know, to have a meal because that 20 minute window is what I've what I know of is it takes your brain the 20 minutes to realize how full your stomach is. So yeah, I usually recommend at least 20 minutes and um, that can that can be difficult for people who are quick eaters. So, you know, taking your time, setting your fork down in between bites, you know, watching the clock and also, um, you know, taking your food like away from your, don't do other things when you're eating because then you're not even thinking about it, about what you're eating. So, um, that can be another strategy too. Okay, great. Yeah. Anything else for me? Kate, hey, I actually have a question for you. Um, what are your thoughts on caffeine intake? I'm a big fan of coffee and yeah. I definitely have a couple of cups at least in the morning. Um, and of course, try to stay hydrated through the day, especially given, you know, what I do. Um, but yeah, just, uh, I'm sure others experience this as well. 
Yeah, um, I think that caffeine actually has um, some good benefits. We know, I mean, research proven for for keeping our energy levels up, actually for exercise performance too. I usually just say focus on um, getting it earlier in the day because I do work with a lot of people who love coffee and then they really have difficulty sleeping at night. And because I think sleep is so important um, for everybody, that's something that I usually recommend watching, watching out for. Um, you know, each cup of coffee has about 200 milligrams of caffeine. Um, so, you know, keeping in moderation, I, I would say a couple of cups of coffee, no, no problem. Um, and then I always suggest people, you know, be mindful of what you're putting in your coffee, especially if you're having multiple class glasses through, uh, mm -hmm. multiple mugs throughout the day. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's fine. Um, it's more of a concern to me when it takes the place of food or takes the place of other hydration or it's interfering with sleep. Otherwise, I think it's all right. Great, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for Kate? Um, so if you jump off of this um, kind of workshop and you have questions, please feel free to email us. Um, you know, we can always forward those, uh, that, those questions to Kate and, and she can answer them for you. Um, so yeah, so that's always there. And, you know, with um, Fit2 membership, um, you do also have access to our registered dietitians as well. So that is something that will be um, of an extra service, but is also a part of your membership as well. Uh, we also offer nutrition workshops for companies. So if your company wanted to host one, they could, um, they just have to reach out to us. And we will also be offering quarterly workshops on nutrition that are free for all tenants to be a part of um, throughout the year once we open. So with that, does anybody have any questions about uh, Fit2 or the fitness center itself? And if not, that's okay. Oh, Sandy. Um, actually, I just curious, like, what kind of classes you guys offering? Yeah, um, so we're planning on offering, um, you know, spinning classes, um, high intensity interval uh, classes, yoga, um, you know, uh, total body strengthening uh, type of group fitness classes. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a very moldable uh, class format um, with names like that. So um, it'll definitely include, you know, resistance exercises, whether it be with, you know, more traditional uh, dumbbells or, um, you know, maybe kettlebells if that's available in the uh, group X space. It just kind of depends on um, how many people we would have in a class and what type of equipment we would bring in there. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, there's opportunity for uh, like smaller group training, um, and that can take place in a more functional space. So um, yeah, it's gonna kind of run the gamut. It's gonna be a lot of fun, um, but we will have uh, spinning bikes. So uh, that'll be nice. A, nice, a nice cardio class, obviously yeah. to have. Sandy will also have, um, which is an option, it's not mandatory, something called MyZone, um, which is heart rate monitor training, um, which is something that you, we will have the capability of speaking to in our classes, mm -hmm. uh, which is mm -hmm. also as well. Um, it will also, I believe there's also a bar in there as well. So we won't be starting off with bar classes, but it's something that's moldable down, down the line. Um, so yeah. And then if there is any feedback you guys do want to give us on what you're looking for, you can email us. We did put out a, a survey a while back. Um, okay. We did get some really good, good info. And if Sandy, if you didn't fill that out, um, you can just email us. Okay, and what is the hours for the fitness center? Yep, it's 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Fridays. Okay, and weekends closed? Weekends is closed, yes. Okay, got it. Thank you. Awesome. Um, any other questions? We will also have, so this fitness center is going to be gorgeous. Um, it's also equipped with um, two wellness pods. So the wellness pods are actually individual workout spaces that are going to have the um, a mirror. The mirror system is in it, which is, you know, it will have a virtual trainer in it that can do all sorts of different classes. So that's something that if, you know, the group fitness schedule, the classes don't quite fit, 
in your schedule or you know you just want something a little bit different you have the opportunity to to follow along to um so it's very similar to a peloton but it's a giant mirror on the wall but in your own private space so that's the new thing too um oh we got some hands up sorry more questions i'm gonna uh, unmute uh sharon. sharon oh great um i just had a quick question about the classes because i'm very interested in that in general when would those times be will they be like early before work, lunchtime, after work. Yep. Yeah, all three of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. The uh, survey we had sent out. Um, one of the questions, you know, that we posed was, "What time of day would work best for you?" I think the um, resounding uh, answer was evening time. But we're still going to have exactly what you said, like a morning, a noon time, and an evening slot. Um, and as we get started, you know, and continue to get more feedback, those times can be tweaked a little bit as well. If it ends up being that like, well, 7 a.m. is too late, you know, most people really want to work out at 6.30. Like these are the times of, you know, types of things we can um, finesse as, uh, as we get open. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Justin, I think, had his hand up. There we go. Yeah. Uh yeah, you're going to be hiring any uh, physical trainers or coaches? Yes. Um, so we will have a full-time general manager and a full-time fitness manager, both who are certified personal trainers. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, we we start off with those two as our main trainers, and then we will add, you know, as the need goes. But yes, personal training is a very big part of what they do. Yeah. And, um, you know, just for a little background, my uh, educational background is in athletic training, sports medicine. Um, I've been doing this for more than a decade now, close to 15 plus years, um, not to age myself, but, um, you know, in my, uh, personal training experience, uh, is, uh, via the, um, National Strength and Conditioning Association as a certified strength and conditioning coach, um, if you're familiar with the various, uh, certification options that are out there. So, um, that said myself and, and, uh, the fitness manager, like we're both well educated and um, very knowledgeable for, I would say, everybody's needs. So, yeah, really exciting. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's see. Any other questions? Um, all right. Well, also, just so you know, um, you know, we don't have an estimated opening date, but we're hoping that that will be coming soon. Um, and once we do, that's when, you know, membership will be open. Um, and yeah, that hopefully that information will be coming out as, as soon as possible. So, but in the meantime, if you guys have any questions, please, please feel free to email us. All right. Awesome. If nobody has any other questions, we'll, we'll wrap this up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Kate, very much. Thanks, Kate. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Kate.